Hey there, Louis Acabalas here. Thanks for stopping by. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the Microsoft Teams question and answer app. Now, before we get started, if you find this tutorial helpful, please hit that thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest Microsoft Teams tutorials that I publish. Now let's go ahead and let's get started. Now, before we get started, what exactly is the Microsoft Teams Q&A app? Well, essentially what this app does is it allows you to facilitate structured question and answer periods in a Microsoft Teams meeting or a Microsoft Teams webinar. You can add this app as a tab to your meeting or webinar invite, and through it, your meeting participants can actually submit questions formally, and you can actually have your participants add comments, add responses, and you can formally designate a top response and close a question once it's been fully addressed. Now, you also have the ability to add moderator settings to your Q&A app, which means you can implement some reviews if perhaps you want to screen questions before they're actually posted to all of your meeting participants. Now, it's important to note at the time of recording this tutorial, this app is in public preview, meaning it's not generally available. And it's possible that when this app does hit general availability, it may look or function a little differently than what you see here in the tutorial. Now, let's go ahead and let's check out how to use it. All right. Now, the first thing that I'll show you is how to add the Q&A app to a meeting. Now, you can see here I have a meeting that I'm about to schedule. Now, I'm going to go ahead and actually send this meeting invitation. That is sort of the prerequisite to actually be able to go in and add the Q&A app. Now that I've scheduled this meeting, I'm going to click into this meeting and edit it. And here I'm going to click on the add a tab button. And here I'm going to search for Q&A. And you can see here that the Q&A app is listed under optimized for meetings. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And I'm going to go ahead and click add. Now, again, just as a reminder, this application is only in public preview at the time of recording this video. So it's not generally available yet. So unless you've opted into the public preview program, you likely will not see this app in your app store. Now, you can see here when you actually add this app to your meeting, you are being asked to configure the application settings. Now, the settings for this app are pretty simple. You can see here the first option is allow attendees to. So you can enable or allow your attendees to ask questions and respond to conversations, or you can actually turn this off. So I am going to go ahead and disable respond to conversations. Now in this app, you can create a post or you can create a question and then facilitate structured answering of that question. Um, and if you want to permit your users to actually be able to respond and have conversations and you want to check this option. Now, the other option is allow organizers to moderate attendee conversations. Essentially, what this does if you enable it is every question that gets submitted through the application will actually have to be reviewed by the organizers and then published in order to make it visible to all attendees. If you do not check this when you're setting up your meeting, uh, anytime a question is asked, it is just going to automatically be visible to all of your attendees. Now you'll note that if I do check this, you're going to see this little prompt that says this cannot be turned off once it's been turned on. So again, that's something that you want to keep in mind. If you do want to review all the questions that come in uh, before you actually release them or publish them, then you want to make sure that you check this. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click save. And so you can see here that this Q&A app has actually been added as a tab to the meeting invitation uh, before the meetings actually launched. All right, now that this app has been added to the actual meeting invitation, very quickly you can see on the right pane that you can still access the settings. So you can actually change these settings at any point before the meeting and you can even change them live during the meeting. Now you will notice again, uh, we are going to permit our attendees to ask new questions, but we're not going to allow them to respond to conversations. And you'll see here that we allowed organizers to actually moderate the conversations. And as the warning prompt indicated, we can't actually disable this now that we've turned this on. So again, that's going to be something that you want to keep in mind. Now, just very quickly in terms of the user interface for this app, 
What you see here is the interface that will be displayed to your attendees before the meeting and during the meeting. So you can see here that I can actually ask a question. And if I click on this, it's just going to bring up this little input box where I can actually come in and type a question. Now, I'll just quickly close this. The other option, if you click on this little drop down arrow, is you can also start a discussion. And so a discussion is meant, again, just to facilitate some sort of structured conversation around specific topics in your meeting. Now, based on my testing, it seems that only organizers are permitted to start conversations. So that option when I was doing my testing was not available to actual participants. Um, they could only go in and ask questions. So again, that's going to be something uh, for you to consider as well. And again, just a reminder, at the time of recording this video, this app is in public preview. And so it's possible that when it makes it into general availability, that some of these features may have been changed. Now, you'll also see here at the bottom of the window, there are three sort of categories in review, published and dismissed. So again, because we enabled moderate attendee conversations, that means whenever a question is submitted, it's going to show up in review and organizers are going to have to either um, approve that response or approve that question or reject it. If it's approved, it'll get published. And if it's rejected, it will show up in the dismissed for organizers only. Now, before we actually go ahead and test this application out, um, I did want to talk very quickly about some of the permissions. And so the first thing that I'll show you is I have added one other attendee to this meeting. Uh, and you can see here, I'm currently logged into another instance of Microsoft Teams as that attendee. Uh, and you can see here, because I haven't changed any of the default permissions for this meeting, you can see that this individual has access to the settings so they can actually come in and modify these settings. And that's because they're currently assigned the role of a meeting organizer. Now to change that role assignment, what you want to do in your meeting invitation is you want to click on the details tab and you want to click on meeting options. And this is going to bring you into the meeting option window in your browser. Now the meeting roles at this point in time are tied to what you select in the who can present field. So you can see here it says who can present everyone. Now if you wanted again to designate only certain people to be organizers, then you can select that in specific people. I'm going to go ahead and click only me and I'm going to save this. Okay. And so now I am currently the only organizer for this meeting. And if I close out of this and I bring back my second instance of Microsoft Teams where I'm impersonating my colleague, and if I click into this meeting, once I click in the Q&A app, what you would expect to see is that this user no longer has access to the app settings. So you can see that he does not. And you can see here that the only option is to go ahead and ask a question. So again, that is how you will actually configure the permissions uh, and the settings for this application to make sure that only your designated organizers are actually able to see the settings uh, and to review questions and comments that are raised either before the meeting or during the meeting uh, as part of that moderation. Next, what I'll demonstrate is how to actually use this application. So this time I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to raise a question uh, while impersonating the meeting attendee. And here I'm just going to ask, why is the company revenue decreasing? And I'm going to post this. Now, before I actually click post, you'll notice you do have some minor options to actually format um, the content of your message. So you can make it bold, italicized. You can add links, bulleted lists, etc. cetera. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and post this. And so you can see that I've posted this question, but nothing shows up in the actual Q&A app. Uh, so what I'll do is I will switch back to my main profile where I am the organizer and I'll click into the meeting. And again, I'm going to click into the Q&A tab. And so because we have moderation settings turned on, what you can see here is that the question is visible to me as the organizer and it shows up by default under in review. Okay. And you can see that I have um, the option here to either publish or dismiss this. Again, if I click on the publish button, it's going to uh, 
uh, display this question to all meeting participants. And if I click on dismiss, it's just going to throw this question in the actual dismissed category, uh, and it will not be visible to the meeting participants. Now you also have some additional options here. You can see there's a little three dot menu button. If I go ahead and click on this, I can go ahead and actually delete this as well. All right, now I've gone ahead and I've joined the meeting uh, just to provide you with a demonstration of what the actual user interface of this application looks like and what the experience is when you're actually in the meeting. Now you'll notice here at the very top of the meeting window, there is a Q&A app icon. So to access the app, you wanna go ahead and click on this. And what this is going to do is this is going to bring up a new pane. So you can see here the title of the app and you can see that there is a more options button here. You can actually rename the app or remove it altogether. Now, in terms of the actual application, you can see the interface is somewhat similar to when accessing it prior to the meeting. So you can see here you have the ask a question box. So I can just click into that and start typing a question. And again, um, I, as the organizer, can also start a discussion and I can just do that by clicking on the drop down and switching the type. Uh, and you can see really the big difference between the discussion and the question and answer is the background of the message box. And again, we can disable permitting our attendees to actually reply to conversations, whereas they can reply to questions um, and you can actually disable that. Now, because I'm the organizer of this meeting, you can see I have the option to toggle between the different statuses of the question. So in review, published, and dismissed. And you can see here, I've also gone ahead and actually deleted a message. Now, what I'm going to do is I am just going to bring up um, my impersonated user here, and I'm gonna go ahead and ask a question. So why is company revenue decreasing? Now I'm gonna go ahead and post this. And I'm gonna switch back to the actual meeting window where I'm the organizer. And what we'd expect to see in a few minutes is that this question will come through. And so if I click back into in review, you can see that this question has now come through. Um, and again, because I have moderation settings turned off, whenever a question is asked by an attendee, um, I have to either publish this or dismiss it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and publish this. And before I do that again, you can see here it's sitting in review. Once I click publish, that is going to add this question to the published menu, which means it's going to be visible to all of your participants. Now you can see below the question, you have the option to like it and your participants will be able to use these emojis to respond to a question. And there's also the ability to comment. So again, attendees will be able to come in and actually respond to questions uh, with other follow-up questions or comments, et cetera. And you can see here, um, the post box is the exact same um, in terms of responding to a question. Now, as the moderator or the organizer, if you click on the three dots to the right of a question, you'll notice that you have a few additional options. So you can delete a question. Um, you can actually pin this, okay? Uh, and you can see I can't pin this because I already have one pinned that I deleted. Uh, and you can also close a conversation, okay? Now, closing a conversation essentially means that it is going to um, end that question so that people can't actually contribute further comments to it. And you'll see when you try to close it, it gives you this prompt that says, please post a final comment to tell participants why you're closing this conversation. So this might be useful if you are facilitating structured Q&A once you've completely discussed a question and you want to move on, you would go in and you would close out that question. Now, just very quickly, um, I will show you what this looks like from a user perspective. So I'm back in my second instance of Microsoft Teams where I'm impersonating a user. And when I click back into the Q&A app um, in the meeting, you can see here, here's the question that I permitted. And you can see here that I have the option to like it. And again, because I posted this, I can actually go ahead and delete this as well. Now you'll notice here that while I'm impersonating Diego, the person that raised this question, that I can't actually comment on it. So to demonstrate what that Q&A functionality looks like, I'll go ahead and post a question as the organizer. So you can see I've just posted this question, will employees have to return to the office full-time? And now if I bring back my second instance of Microsoft Teams, 
And again, because I'm in public preview and I'm currently joined this meeting from two different instances of Microsoft Teams, sometimes I just need to click out of the tab and come back into it in order for these new elements to be added. So you can see here, will employees have to return to the office the first time? I can go ahead and like this and I cannot respond. And again, I can't respond because I did not enable the actual settings for participants to be able to respond to questions, to conversations. Now I can go ahead and change this again from the actual meeting invitation. And if I go ahead and click respond to conversations and save, and I come back into my Microsoft Teams instance where I'm impersonating one of the attendees and click out of the tab and back into it. What you can see now is that Diego, this meeting attendee, has the ability to go ahead and actually contribute a response to a question. And you can see here that you have the ability again to post responses to questions. And again, your users will be able to actually uh, you know, respond to these with emojis. They can actually comment on responses to keep the conversation sort of threaded and organized. And of course, the individual who um, actually posted a comment will have the option to come in and edit this in case they made a mistake. You'll also see the more actions button. And again, as the person who posted a comment or question, you have the ability to delete these. Now, the last thing that I'll show you is what happens when you actually close out a conversation. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click close conversation and click continue. Okay, so I've closed out that question. And again, you can see that I'm still able to respond right now. Um, if I click out of the tab and come back in, you can see here that now that this question is closed, the attendee in this meeting does not have the ability to come in and add any further comments. They can only see the responses um, that were added. And you can see here, it says that Luigi Acobellis, the organizer, closed this conversation, but they still have the option to have a dialogue about other open questions. Now, the last thing that I'll show you is what happens when you actually end your meeting. So I'm gonna go ahead and end the meeting. And I, as the organizer, will come out of the Q&A app and back into it. And so if I click on the Publish tab, what you can see is that the Q&A will actually persist even once the meeting is ended. So you will always have the ability to come back into the meeting invitation, click into the Q&A app and view uh, questions that have been asked and responses that were provided. So that's it. This was just a quick tutorial showing you how to use the Microsoft Teams Q&A app that recently launched in public preview. This app should be rolling out and be made generally available in the coming months. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please like it and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest Microsoft Teams and new features. I'm Louis Yacobellis. Thanks for stopping by. Talk soon.